my PS4 there. Smeared with cosmic poetry. Yeah, that pest band sprawl. Inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's The Mask of the Red Death. Masterpiece short story, 1842. It's printed in the book, the whole story. The metaphor, pest band, ouch. Uh, well, I used, uh, yeah. Not an international border crossing place. <laughs> you know, I've never entered Nepal legally <laughs> up to now anyway uh yeah but yeah uh-huh I've got to improvise fast yeah a new thing something to do here so um I buy everybody in the chai shop a free chai I shout out free chai <laughs> got their attention now <clears throat> as uh they toast the albino creature from Jupiter I guess me um, I make a tortured speech. Well, I wasn't tortured, but the words were tortured. Nepali. <laughs> that look at, I have no passport. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, uh, they don't, none of them have passports either. So, uh, a woman, unexpectedly, a woman uh, rises uh, up and uh, she's loaded with silver jewelry. Huh? In the hills here, the women are just adorned with gorgeous jewelry and nose rings. And she uh, says she knows the back way to Chitre that it's only a four hour walk compared to six days of walking. And that she will uh, uh, take my uh, pack. They, they, they have like a band about as big as my four fingers here that comes across their forehead and they carry their load on their back in a basket. There's a picture of her in the book doing this. <laughs> but we're in a different medium. Uh, video? Yeah, uh, yeah, she'll take it up there the back way. And I cost me my last 10 rupees. Uh, yeah, the bargain of my lifetime, for sure. So up we go. Switch backing up. I can hardly carry my body itself up the hill. And this woman is, and she's whist, she's singing, she's humming. Folk songs, <laughs> yeah. Uh, get to the monastery. She puts the bundle down by the kitchen door and... Um, no must stay, no must stay. Never see her again. And uh, wow, uh, the eyes of the monks, huh? Uh, must have been about 20 of them. Their eyes light up. When they understand what I'm doing, they're whispering, Elam, Elam, peace, good peace. I don't understand, but um, up to this point, I might as well have been, you know from another planet, uh, or like escape from uh, uh, abominable snowman's cave. Why do we call these creatures abominable? If you're a baby snow sun, you love your snow parents. Everybody should lighten up. Uh, yeah, I get a goosebumpy tingle when I realize I am in with them now because I brought these trees here by a hard walk and these trees mean food. Yeah, the Tibetans, they know, all know about a hard walk. The Chinese just 10 years earlier forced them out of their homeland by a hard walk. A million died. Couldn't get over the snow passes. Many, many came into Darjeeling. Refugees here now. Yeah, they know about a hard walk. Mm -hmm. Well, my ordeal is not over. I've got to have these trees planted now or they'll die. So organize a party of monks. The Peace Corps guy, uh, told me I had to dig three foot holes for each tree, like more than a, like a meter deep. And in the bottom third, 
fill it with dung, animal dung. Animal dung. Oh, we've got yaks, horses, mules, ponies. Yeah, well, we get some uh, pony manure, and we do that. And it takes all day because they've got a shovel, and only one, and this shovel doesn't have a metal end to it. It's, got, it's a wooden shovel. Rocky hard ground. Cold in the Himalayas. Yeah, well... We do that. It takes all day, and I am so exhausted that this ordeal makes me throw up. I'm out of it. Go to Dorothy's house, <laughs> crash in a room. I'm so exhausted. Oh, I'm woken up by a violent summer uh, thunderstorm coming off that 12,000-foot uh, Shandak Fu Pass, you know, for the world's highest mountains right over there. Howling, intense energy storm, blanketing everything in thick fog, tremendous discharge of energy. Uh, causes me to reflect. Uh, about my life and uh, that I grew up in a General Motors manufacturing town 100 miles north of Detroit where there were two options in life. You either worked at steering gear or transmission. General Motors factories down by the Saginaw River, steering gear, they make millions of steering gears. You could take that path or you could take the other fork in the road. Make millions of transmissions. Yeah. Now I find myself with no master plan of my own uh, in a surreal Tibetan monastery. 8,500 feet up in the Himalayas. I'm just 21. And I sense that this is my one shot, once in a lifetime opportunity um, to profoundly reflect and understand uh, the nature of myself, of existence, of truth. Uh, I feel locked in a prison of separative identity. I want to break out of prison. I'm going to be one with every creature. And how do you do that? How do you break out of Optical delusion. That was a bit in snow, huh? Yeah, time warped. Look, it's as if this big oh, cosmic mother cat who loves me mm -mm, picks me up by the scruff of the neck and dropped me into this monastery in the paw. That's, that's how little power my individual egocentric little earth man self uh, has in any of this. Uh, affair. Oh, yeah, this big mother cat dropped me from one basket to another. From one continent to another? I have a feeling I'm being nourished by a spiritual goddess who I've never met. She's so powerful and immense. I'm unable to understand as a mere kitten her cosmic higher powers. Something. Occult mysterious is happening to me. Way beyond what I know. It's happening, yeah. And I have to give chance, a chance. Mm -hmm. Well, look at I'm as you may have picked up. I'm a loudmouth, know it all, cocky, devil, Aries, yeah. Uh, but this Tibetan uh, atmosphere 
it kind of humbles me, uh, softens me. And after all, I'm looking for a snow cave for 10 years to go for broke on the spiritual plane. So uh, maybe this monastery is my snow cave.